every Monday or every day I come in to do a show and I'm all excited because we've put together a bunch of work and then another RFI, uh, another RFA who's supposed to just break the mold, who's supposed to shatter the market expectations, who's supposed to make the Mitch Marner contract not look like, you know, maybe um, one of the biggest overpays in NHL history, considering the leverage that the Maple Leafs had and where the player's from and, you know, what they can do for him. And then today, just right before the show, Braden Point, he did exactly what everybody said he wasn't going to do, but that we all thought he was going to do, and that was sign on the cheap in Tampa Bay. Three years, cap hit of $6.75 million. And this continues to go to my number one point with the entire Marner thing is that everyone keeps pointing to the term. Like they only locked him up for six years. So even if you just look at that, so three years of the Austin Matthews five year, he's guaranteed to be here window, right? The way that we were really evaluating this team, which is how long Matthews is here. Three of those years, Mitch Marner is going to make that much more than a guy like Braden point. And even when there was the discussion of Marner on the bridge, it was always around a number like nine. And it's just, it's hard to move past this. And I know some people just, you know, they're still going to be in my mentions and they're still going to be texting in about how, like, I don't understand term and it's going to look like a great deal three years from now. It looks like a horrible deal today. It is a horrible deal today. Like, there's just no, there's no getting away from it because every single one of these RFAs that rolls in continues to show one thing that, the, none of the Leafs took Kyle Dubas seriously as a negotiator, and they felt like they could absolutely take advantage of him to the fullest degree when it came to these negotiations, and they they did, and Marner was the prime example of that. Yeah. Two things can be true, of course. Maple Leafs are in good shape, and it's oh a fun God. team to watch. But what is, what is the number in four years that Braden Point has to make on a long-term deal at that point where you're like, oh, Good thing uh, they got Mitch Marner locked oh, up. Oh, wow. Woo, woo. Like, is it $15 million per? Even if it is. Like, it's the difference between what they're making now. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, in that case, you would recoup that in the next three years of the deal. But he has to make $15 million. Yeah. He has to make $15 million on a six-year deal in three years' time, which is, okay, I, I suppose possible. Uh, yeah, this new uh, TV deal, quite a thing. If that's the thing. And, uh, yeah, there truly is no discount for playing in Florida if that is the case or, you know, goes somewhere else and, and ends up with that money. But as it stands right now, this record-setting, uh, unprecedented group of RFAs have pretty much stayed in line. The guy that's feeling worse than anybody, though, has to be Sebastian Ajo. <laughs> like no. He, uh, he maybe misread the market worse than anybody here. Uh <laughs> Those quotes are still so great. Yeah. Should have those on hand for just about every show. Like, I just felt rushed. It's like, wait, where was your agent? Yeah. This was, a, it was, how long ago was that offer sheet? Like two yeah. months ago? Yeah. You know, I think even more than that. Yeah. So, anyway, I don't want to dwell on this again today because we've made our opinions pretty clear as to what that contract looks like. And in fact, the Leafs already know that they weren't going to be signing a good deal. Like, this has been reported just about everywhere that they were conceding that. They weren't going to get this thing done because or, or they weren't going to get it done in a way that was going to look friendly for the team. They just wanted to push it over the goal line. They wanted to make sure that it was done and that this team was all here for camp. And yeah, the team still has an, a, has an opportunity to win the Stanley cup this year. It's just, again, it's, it's just disheartening that playing in Toronto didn't equate to any type of cap savings or guys didn't look at this as an opportunity where, you know, they would want to make sure that, some of their sacrifice meant it was going to be easier to win for a longer period of time. And that this is now what's going to come with making those figures is that it's going to be very easy to point the finger when it comes to any failures with this group, right? Like it's, it's not going to be, Oh, well, it's a team thing. It's going to be like, no, you you're putting your blame on one of maybe three or four people. Well, yeah. Especially if it, the problem this team has is depth. Yeah. <laughs> right. And they, they have a, a trade that makes sense that they can't do because of, Cap problems. Well, even you and I in the, what what do we call it in the hub, in our preparation center, I, the newsroom. That the, sounds like it's room. a hemorrhoid the room. Newsroom. Well, preparation center. Oh, yeah. Okay, I didn't call it that. Uh, when we were in there, we were talking just about how 
Neuverth today. Stop calling him that. Neuverth. Yeah. I don't know. He's one of the two. I've heard both. He's I've a tomato tomato guy. Neuverth. So he basically said today, I'm not feeling up to go. Not up to it. He's not up to it tonight. <laughs> And Michael Hutchison, he of, you know, uh, what, 900 save in the NHL? Yeah. Uh, let's see here, career. Uh, 908. Yeah. Uh, is slated to be the guy that's behind Freddie Anderson, someone who every year when we get around to January, we're going to be talking about the workload on Freddie Anderson and looking at some other teams with backup situations and saying, well, you know what, you're just not capable of doing those things. Uh, we still don't even know who's starting the year on the third line. You told me today that you think Dmitry Timoshov is the leader in the clubhouse yeah. when it comes to who's going to start the year on the third line. And yeah, a lot of Timoshov hype. Yeah, Timoshov. Okay, that's that's not great. Anyway, um, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, last last thing on this. Okay. Though. Do you think the that the situation is different with Marner if? the Toronto Maple Leafs had waited to this point. Or, you know what, I mean, it's so hard to know because who knows if these bridge deals are being signed if everybody's still waiting on Marner. But if if this, if, like, you see point signed for less than seven on a three-year bridge, you understand that you're <laughs> you're not worlds apart from Brayden Point. Brayden Point's probably the more valuable player. Uh, I wonder if, you know, if Kyle Dubas had just put us through the ringer emotionally by holding on to his cards and waiting to the last possible moment, whether they could have squeezed him. I don't know. It's something we'll always have to wonder. It doesn't seem like, yes, that was the case, but I, I just, I'll, that he gets the full camp. It's not hanging over the team. They obviously viewed that that had a large benefit to yeah. not take it that far. They knew that there were cap implications that they could not um, overcome had it gone into the season. And I think that the player and his agent really knew that. And that with like what Bourne said when uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, that they had done all these cap maneuvering and they had basically freed up exactly what they were willing to pay Marner at the very max. And so for him to say, well, I'm going to take less, just it didn't line up. They had done everything and the consequences for the Leafs to basically say, we've done all these moves and now we've got all this space left over. And now it's a really impossible time to trade you. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't plausible, and so they they got into that spot. I think, again, the, the real error here, and what remains to be true, is that it was a misread as to how much these guys were going to buy in organization top-down from the very beginning. Like, you had all the, all the breadcrumbs. Duba saying that we can and we will was not a we can and we will sign them all to record deals. It was, and Brendan Shanahan talking about, you know, you've got to make sacrifices to win for everyone to be here. These guys really did think that there would be a buy-in. And then when they got Tavares, it was, they didn't lock everyone up right away. I know that we've heard the thing about Lou Lamorello and, you know, you use as much time as possible to make sure that those guys are worth it. And if they want the most, it's, that's, that's a good problem to have. But yeah, I think that you should have been able to kind of look at Mitch Marner and his season and playing him a year with John Tavares. And if you didn't know unequivocally that he was going to be, you know, an easy contract to get done, or that he wasn't going to, you know, try to break the mold with Ferris and have all these cookie crumbs throughout, again, the season where they were like, you know, why aren't we the, the dad? Why aren't we in the conversation for the captain? The agent talking about not wanting to take a hometown discount, all these different things. You should have been able to read your client or your, your personnel a little bit better. So anyway, uh, Leafs have their roster. They're Stanley Cup contenders. They don't have a lot of margin for error. Don't get hurt. Nobody get hurt. Mm -hmm. Nobody underperform. And, okay? Yeah. Everybody perform to your career norms. Everybody stay healthy. Uh, Freddie Anderson, mm, don't be affected by playing 60-plus games again this year. Because you're going to need to. Everything's fine. Yep.